Hair loss affects both men and women, which can have an impact on their emotional well-being. The process of hair restoration has evolved and now has better results. In this segment, we'll take you step-by-step step through the process with Dr. Erwin Simon, the medical director of Vegas Valley Hair Restoration and a renowned expert on this minimally invasive procedure. Dr. Simon discusses the typical patient considering a hair restoration. The typical client for hair restoration is someone in their 20s to up to age 70, usually in their 30s to 40s, men who are really starting to see that male pattern hair loss. They're looking to try and do something before they reach the point of really looking truly bald. There are basically two types of hair restoration. And for many years, the best thing going was something called a strip harvest. The strip basically is cutting a strip of skin out of the back of the head, the donor zone, and sewing it closed, and then cutting the individual hair follicles away from that strip to have them ready for implantation. The problem is it leaves a nasty scar. I'm a minimally invasive surgeon and this is 2018. Why would I leave a big scar on the back of your head when I can harvest individual hair follicles and move 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 hair follicles all in one day's time and give you a very nice, complete hair restoration? Dr. Simon reveals why hair is harvested from the back of the head. The reason that we harvest hair from the back of the head for men, the so-called donor zone, is because that hair is resistant to the effects of testosterone and DHT, dihydrotestosterone. So that hair is resistant. It will grow. We may lose more of our native hair, but if we've been artistic at what we do and we implant this very nice uh, hair that will continue to grow, it'll be there forever. Dr. Simon takes us through the process of hair restoration. Our process begins by first really meeting with the client to determine what's their goal and what's their expectation. We always want to make certain that we create a realistic expectation about what we can do for the individual client. The next step is to determine whether we're really going to do a recreation of their frontal hairline or work on the central portion of the head or the back of the head or some portion of all three. Today's patient is, is sort of a mix. We're going to take this man who's in his 60s and work to repair a little of his frontal hairline, mainly in these temple recesses. But his frontal hairline looks very good and very much age appropriate. What he really has is central loss going all the way back to his crown. And he is that man that will benefit the most. And really, truly, that's what he's looking for is a repair of his overall uh, look on the top of the head. When they come in, we don't have them take any medicines until we've drawn out what we plan to do, perhaps had their spouse look things over. We want to make everyone happy. This is really a team effort. And then what we have to do in order to harvest with the individual follicle unit is to shave the donor area in the back of the head down to beard stubble length. Once we've done that, we numb up that area, the patient has taken a Valium, they usually drift off to sleep as we get into a harvest rhythm. We're rhythmically harvesting individual hair follicles to the point of getting, as I said it before, a thousand to even two thousand follicles in a given morning, and we'll spend the rest of the day implanting those where we would like them to be. Coming next, more on the hair restoration procedure. The final results of this minimally invasive hair restoration procedure have been satisfying for patients. Dr. Erwin Simon describes the patient recovery after the procedure. In our procedure, we work with very well-trained technicians. This is a very technical and very detailed approach to make certain that we harvest individual hair follicles in their complete nature so that we can then implant them. And there is a real art to doing this. Our eyes sometimes get a little bleary after we've been harvesting or implanting for 30 to 60 minutes at a time. So we rotate off to make certain that we are fresh and we're getting our best effort. At the end of the procedure, the patient will go home with a wrap on his or her head and we'll ask them to simply slit it and take it off in the morning. The back of the head, the donor zone, is not worrisome. It's easy to treat 
hair will grow back in where we've not harvested and hide what we've taken out with no one being able to be the wiser. The area that we've implanted, particularly if it's more in the front, we have to have them go home and sleep sitting upright for the first two nights. The last thing we would want is for them to rub their head on a pillow and lose grafts. But by about the third day, those grafts are pretty solid. This is going to make you look at your appropriate age like you've got a very full head of hair. There you go. And that's what our goal for you is in the long run. During the procedure, about the only discomfort the patient will feel is the initial needle pricks to numb up the area, both for the donor site and later in the day for the implantation sites. Once it's numb, they have no pain whatsoever during the procedure. And the discomfort that they feel is usually something that doesn't require anything more than uh, Tylenol at home that night, but I do typically give a prescription a little bit stronger in case there's that patient that needs it. When we send our patients home, we give them very specific instructions about how they should gently shampoo those first few times. And then by the end of a week, they just treat their head and their hair normally. About two weeks later, the little stubble that the patient sees is pretty much gonna have fallen out. And if the patient doesn't know that's coming, they get very perturbed and it's like, what did we do here? But they know it's coming and they will look like they did when they started. Those hair follicles will lie dormant for about four months. And at about four months to five months, they start to grow. I usually see the patients back at a week and a month and at four months, just to make certain that they're doing well and that everything is going according to plan. But the plan is to really see the growth beginning at four to five months. So I try to see them at eight months and a year and I take photos to try and show everybody what we've been able to accomplish. Dr. Simon reveals his satisfaction for the success of this procedure. Hair restoration is a highly successful procedure and it's become a very large industry throughout the world. We expect well over 90% of transplanted hair follicles to take root and eventually grow. When they come back in at that one year time frame, and they have a tremendously different look they're a happy patient and that certainly sits well for me.